Mike, thank you. Good game there. Really well pitched game. We may have one here as well as we welcome you to ESPN's coverage of the Little League World Series. It's presented by T Mobile. Well, today it is the winner's day, and all of these teams now just two wins away from a championship. On the United States side, Nolansville, two wins. They're in the U.S. championship. Washington, two wins in the U.S. championship. And we will see how this game unfolds. Two really good teams. Let's take a look at the United States bracket. And it's been a while. These teams have had three, four days off. But a little later tonight, Needville, Texas will take on the team from El Segundo, California. That game's on ESPN2 at 7 o'clock Eastern time. And then the advancing winners will then have one more victory to a U.S. championship. Julie Foudy's down on the field. She will join us in just a minute. Nice day here again. A little warmer, about 86 degrees. 186 right here in the booth. That's yeah. Tim Kirchin <laughs> and Jessica Mendoza. Well, much of this summer in Nolansville, the attention has been on the team and then specifically their pitcher, Stella Weaver, and she's on the mound today. Stella and the fellas. You guys, this is history. We're watching the seventh time in Little League Baseball World Series history that we're going to see a female take the mound and you guys she's not just a girl she's a ball player you see her signing autographs there we saw her running the bases in their last game getting some hits the first hit actually that she got here at the little league baseball world series and she had a chance to catch up pregame with julie fowdy that's right i am with the stella weaver stella great first game and now today you're on the mound as well seventh girl to pitch in the little league world series how are you feeling? I feel amazing. It's going to be, I always say to myself that it's always going to be nervous, the first batter. But once I get through that, it's going to be perfectly fine. So, uh, Weaver fever is alive and well. I can hear it in the stands. I mean, you've been doing interviews for Good Morning America. Buster Olney had you on. We've got the kids cast crew got you on. We've been chasing you, running you mad. And you handle it all so well. How are you dealing with all this? A lot of attention. Yeah, so in the beginning I was super nervous. And then after like a couple more interviews and stuff, I started getting really confident. And now I honestly kind of like it. So. <laughs> Oh my gosh, first person to ever say that they like it. Yes, Stella, I love it. And yesterday, you got to meet someone pretty special, I heard. Bryce Harper, how was that? It was so much fun. Me and uh, my teammate Jace, we were standing, waiting for about like 30 minutes for him to come. And then he finally came and he talked to us. And he's moving super close to our town, which is very cool. Yeah. And he just talked a little like stuff about how fun it's going to be and like all yeah, yeah, fun stuff. Ah, all, this, all this awesomeness surrounding you. And I want to know, lastly, because uh, I'm going to be here, Stella and the fellas on tour after Little League World Series, correct? Yes. Okay, good. They're going on the road. Road show. Let's go. Here we go, Stella. All right, Stella, terrific. And, uh, boy, do you like being interviewed all the time? Like, Are you comfortable doing that? <laughs> Not anymore. No, <laughs> that, that ship has sailed. Hey, this is a lot of pressure. Pitcher for Washington. He started the first game. Here he goes again. We saw him in the first game, Trey Kirchhoff. He was great. Now, he's not overpowering. He only throws 65 miles an hour, but he's got a great curveball. He'll throw it to start and at bat. He'll throw it behind in the count. Of his first 17 curveballs he threw the other day, 15 were for strikes. He is really good, and if he wins today, he might do a backflip to celebrate a standing backflip. Standing backflip. I don't know how anyone can do that, but he can. No trampoline. And we got a chance to meet him there. It's brought to you by Dollar Car Rental. Both teams, good fielding teams. Washington has been a great hitting team. Of course, they're going to be in the field first. Now, Owensville, Tennessee, three years in a row, this Little League has been here. And we take a look at their batting order. Nash Carter, he had a triple in their opening game win. And it felt like everybody got a chance to get a hit. McCauley, Blaylock, McKenzie, Barney, Tabor, McCarty. This is the continuous batting order again, so all 12 will hit before we get back to the top of the order. And again, both teams had great success. The Nolansville, Tennessee team beat Rhode Island 8-1 to one on Friday. So this is their first game in three days. And on the other side, it's been even a little bit longer. A main team that came in floating all sorts of ability to hit and field lost 10-0 on Thursday. So it's the first game in four days for the kids from Seattle. Beauty of Little League Baseball. Seattle, Washington, and Nolansville, Tennessee, just outside of Nashville. Kirchhoff is ready, so is Carter. And we get our first 
glove of the game and a hit for Carter. Brett Taylor had it in and then out of the glove. Timmy, you talked about the breaking ball, and that's exactly what Nash Carter was sitting on. He understood this is what he's going to throw. You see him toes on the line of the batter's box, really crowding, goes upstairs, meets this, hits it hard, just off the glove of Brett Taylor. Good start. Carter has been on really every time he's had a bat in his hands. Here's McCauley. He sends one over the head of the second baseman, fielded cleanly in right field by Chang. Um, two pitches, two swings, two hits. This is what I love so much about Little League Baseball, how these hitters are in swing mode all the time, and they know that Kirchhoff throws a lot of strikes. He'll start you off with a breaking ball, two pitches, two knocks. And already one more hit than he had to deal with in his first game against Maine. He went four, shut him out, and he gave up just the one hit. He's already given up two here, and since the start of the regionals, Ray Kirchhoff on the mound, 15 innings, one earned run, 29 strikeouts, or nearly two strikeouts per inning. The head of Turner Blaylock, 0-2. There's been four pitches, four swings, and these are just any swings. It always impresses me. First of all, when a pitcher starts out 0-0 with the breaking ball, Tim, you mentioned that, but how about hitters saying, I am hunting that pitch and being able to want to hit it? TB2, who's 5'1", 107, oh. look out, right off of the helmet. And after being ahead 0-2, Kirchhoff lost him by hitting him, and the bases are loaded. I've seen three kids in my games get hit in the head, so today I put on one of the helmets just to see how protective they are. Now, we don't want anyone to get hit in the head, but that is one big protective helmet. Thank goodness for these kids. Who threw at you? No, I just put it on just oh. to make sure I understood how heavy it was. Right. It can always help out, though. And you, yeah, if you yeah. need somebody to yeah, throw one at definitely. your... Uh... <laughs> Infield in right away from McKenzie. Heck! Strike one. And I would bring the infield in here. If there's weak contact, you can get a force at the plate. I think too often we keep the infield back. This is going to be a low-scoring game. You might as well cut a run down right away. Good job there by Kirchhoff. Off-speed pitch, 0-2 again. The outfield, at least in center and right, fairly shallow. Brooks Shuey out there in center is terrific. Swing and a miss, really good job. Kirchhoff, he went outside the zone and he caused McKenzie to swing. There's one out. And there's the curveball, which he used so beautifully in game one. He's got two different speeds to it, a slower one and a little quicker one. Jace Barney, third base. They'll have a chance here. They get one That's at home, out. and that'll be it. But a great job by Brett Taylor. And just like that, two out. Bases stay loaded. And infield's going to be up on the corners in that play every single time, but that's precisely why you bring it in, so you can get the force on a softly hit black ground ball. Can they get a big hit here from Jackson Tabor? He's the first baseman. And a good start by Kirchhoff, 0-1. Both sides of the plate. Saw look at the strikeout, two batters prior away. Now he throws it inside as well. 10 pitches, nine strikes. Slow roller is trouble. Taylor, first, got him! What a play by Brett Taylor at third. Told you they're good defensive teams, and how about a bases loaded, no out situation? And they end up with nothing. Trey Kirchhoff, what a job. And this is a terrific play by the third baseman. This ball was hit very slowly, and he's got to be able to throw this across his body and get something on it. Saves the run. Brett Taylor, terrific. We'll continue. We head to the bottom of the first. The Little League Baseball World Series on ESPN is presented by T-Mobile. That's America's largest and fastest 5G network. The kids from Seattle, Washington will be at the plate when we come back. Good start to this one. All right, here we go. Yes, right, Timmy, here we go. We are back, skies are blue, clouds are out. This is Lomity Stadium, the United States bracket. And, uh, well, Houdini, Kirchhoff had bases loaded, nobody out, and was able to get out of the inning. 
Big time city, Seattle, Washington, and uh, this Little League is located just a couple of blocks north, a little further away from the city, University of Washington, about 15 minutes. Kids are ready, so are we, let's meet them. My name's Matthew Fisher, and my favorite player is Luis Castillo. My name is Rylan Jackson, and my favorite player is Chris Bryant. My name's Nolan Chang, and my favorite school subject is lunch. My name is Sam Santos, my favorite food is lasagna. My name is Nathan Ehrlichman, my favorite food is my father's grilled cheese. My name is Brooke Shuey, and my favorite actor is Bill Murray. My name is Calvin Shumway, and my favorite MLB baseball player is Ty France. My name is Campbell Foster, and my favorite team is Washington Huskies football. My name is Brett Taylor, and my favorite food is sushi. My name is Trey Kirchhoff, and my favorite player is Barry Bonds. My name is Larson Ang, and my favorite baseball player is Julio Rodriguez. My name is Owen Luke, and my favorite food is tacos. So Washington and uh, their leader, Christian Shuey, Stosh Jackson, Ben Shumway, their assistant coaches there. And there is the lineup for Seattle. Chang Kirchhoff, Owen Luke is one of the extra hitters. Interesting, like a DH. I mean, he is in the middle of everything, batting third for him. Corbin Cyphers is the catcher. I just watched him. He ran like a beeline to shake the home plate umpire's hand. Corbin wants to be an umpire. Now he's already established a relationship with the home plate umpire. Good move by the catcher. Stella Weaver in the regionals in three games, appeared in five and a third innings. Two hits, did not give up an earned run, struck out seven. Shohei is her favorite player. She becomes the seventh female pitcher to throw at the Little League World Series. There's only one of them that you can have that sign out there. That's my sister. <laughs> so Nolan Chang will lead things off. Keep an eye on this defense, especially over there on the left side. Carter is terrific. It's short. He was here last year. Foul ball. First pitch swing in both teams. Nolan Chang, too. You're going to see some of the quickest hands. So impressed with him through regionals. He is a hit machine, and he hasn't met a pitch he doesn't like. And Stella throws a lot of strikes, so we should see a lot of first pitch swing. That's a really good pitch there from Stella. And she's fastball, curveball, changeup, throws about 65. The curveball is really good. Nolan Chang, he had a couple of hits in the first game, and this one is going to just go foul down the left field line. And they have so much pitching on the Tennessee team that if anything were to go wrong with Stella, and it hasn't all year, they have plenty of people behind her. Nolan Chang said if he could talk to his past self, he would tell himself to get a haircut. <laughs> a little quick pitch there from Stella. So that's a pretty interesting concept. If you could go back and tell Jessica Mendoza something, what would you tell her? Oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> that was a long list. <laughs> oh. I would tell Tim Kirkchen to have taken Spanish in high school yep. and college like because 33% of the big leaguers speak Spanish. And I can only speak French. Now that Russell Martin is retired, I don't have anyone to talk to. Fluent? I'm terrible at it, but at least I know something. <laughs> Good pitch. Waver with a strikeout of Chang. She went back to the fastball. To be honest, if I were to go back, it'd be a lot of what Stella Weaver's got, and that's confidence. Being able to instill this into a young girl, and Stella, the way that she commanded this strike zone, this at bat, the breaking ball, but then comes back with the fastball, blows it by some quick hands at Nolan Chang. Jess, how big were you at her age? She's a big girl. She's the tallest player on their team. It's not, yeah, oh. I mean, we're about the same height now. And when I was 12 years old, I was definitely a lot shorter. I just love how she uses her body. It's not easy to be that length. And you'll see her hit, too, but when she's pitching, you guys, I mean, the understanding of getting all of your lower half and upper half, those levers moving together, and you see how quickly she works. She's got a lot of power with that lower half. Ball! Just missed off. She's 5'8 out there on the mound, and then you add the mound, so she's throwing down. And she's got three siblings, Henry, who's 14, Olivia, 17, and Caroline, who's 20 who have been a hugely positive influence. Oh, what a snare over there by Blaylock. This 
is a game that's going to be featuring a lot of good defense. Turner Blaylock to his left. And this is what coach told me. We want Sella to put the ball in play because our defense is so good behind her that that's what we want. We want balls in play. Now watch this play. That ball's a base hit if he doesn't get there quickly enough and makes a perfect throw to first. Oh, and Luke swings at the first one. Uh. In between hop, no problem. Ty McKenzie. That was not an easy play. He got it on the short hop and made a beautiful throw to first. Defense, defense, and pitching. That's what this game feels like it's going to be about. Right, three really good defensive plays in the first inning for Tennessee. But they worked out in between games at the original Little League field, Carl Stott Field, right over next to Bowman Field. And you're really not allowed on there, but they found a way to get on there. Really? They took infield. Coach Huth told me that's the best infield we've ever had. It's the best practice we ever had. And given the symbolism of the whole thing, he said it was a magical time wow. to play on the first Little League field in the history of Williamsport. Really cool. Randy, his dad was a longtime coach. His right. ashes on the pitcher's mound died back in 18. Such a significant role model in his life, especially as it relates to baseball, but all things as a dad. And I'm sure his dad would have loved to have that experience. They take infield and they don't use a ball. They do this phantom infield right. thing where they crack bats, but there's no ball. It's good to know they use a ball when they actually do take some infield. Right. Well, you need to explain that it's just a show, correct? Yeah, it's just a show. I mean, that, to Tim's point, every time Nolansville is on the field, they will, they will before a game, put on this show in which there's no baseball being hit, but they awesome. pretend to field everything oh. off the plate. They will throw to first. They'll pop a ball up to a catcher, make believe ball, but they'll have another guy crack a bat so it sounds like the ball is making contact. Stella robbed a home run. I mean, it's your imagination. Right, right. <laughs> because at the end of the day, this is fun. And they have so much fun taking Phantom infield before every game. And if, the, if you haven't seen it, it's a little odd, but it works for them. Oh. But they're taking real infield of course. all the time. Yeah, including over it, the field you just talked about. Yes. 2-2 count to Kale McCarty. He is the left fielder. Oh, that ball's driven to left field. Jackson's going back. Still going back over his head. McCarty into second stand-up double. And he hit it hard, and he hit it far. This pitch right in on the hands, too. Watch him get the barrel to this ball. Do you see it running continuously into his body? But his hands follow it. Stay inside and this ball. I thought it was leaving the yard. Great job driving the ball out to left field. Ryland Jackson out there and left. Well, no here shot. is the opportunity, guys. Stella Weaver is up. In the first game, she legged out an infield single. She's really fast. Squares to bunt and pulls that foul. She became the tenth female with a hit at the Little League World Series. Seventh female, not a pitch. And she is an accomplished hitter. Monet Davis was an unbelievable pitcher, good hitter. Stella Weaver may be a little bit better and more advanced as a hitter at this age than Monet, who had a slight edge on the pitching side. Does it again oh. in the box off her, so she'll stay alive. 0 and 2. And already two instances in this game infield in, and now we're bunting a guy, a uh, runner to third of playing for one run because it's pretty clear it's going to be a low scoring game. See if Kirchhoff goes to that curveball. And there oh. it was, but too far outside. That's a good high, good take. Stella actually used to play hockey until she was nine years old. Loves scoring goals. Sidney Crosby, her favorite player. Right up the middle, she delivers a hard hit. Runner at third being held. Stella Weaver, line shot, first and third. Right back up the middle after failing to get a bunt down on the first two pitches, and that is a good hit anywhere. She smoked this. This ball, too, she stays with it. You watch the break on this. Head, eyes down. Mm. And that's why she absolutely drives you. Talk about her playing hockey. That looked like a hockey stick getting through the lower part of the zone, driving this one right up the middle. 
She hit it so hard, McCarty had no chance to score. Now Carter Gamillion, third baseman in. Ball. They have scouted Trey very well. Weaver goes on the throw to the pitcher, and she's in there safely at second. And what great base running that is. Now the double play is not in order. Stella, <laughs> she can throw a baseball, she can hit a baseball, and she can run. Here comes the infield for the second inning in a row. We're in the second in for Seattle. 1 0 to Carter Gamillion, one of the extra hitters, swing and a miss. Infield up again. This time, though, no force at the plate, which kind of changes the dynamic a little bit. We'll see what happens here. Ball! Boy, that's a did he go? tough pitch. He did not swing, but he thought about it, and then he realized this may hit me. And he didn't really even take a swing. Again, they scouted Trey very well. They know he throws a lot of breaking balls, and they've got the two hits in this inning on breaking balls. Yep. Just run off his foot. Right Home plate umpire Philip King made uh, everyone aware, I think on the hill too, that that ball was fouled at the plate and we're staying here. Right. Well, if it hits you in the batter's box, it is a foul ball. If it hits you outside of the batter's right. box, in fair territory, you're out. Big 2 2 pitch. Ball. That's high now. Three balls, two strikes. Biggest advantage, too, for Tennessee is they've got a lot of breaking ball pitchers. That's part of their game as they spin the ball. They faced it a ton when they enter squad. First base is open. 3-2. Ooh, just foul. That had extra bases written all over it. Great observation by Carter. He said Nash Carter leads by showing. Grayson May leads by telling. Carter Gamillion has seen this team for a while. Both those kids have been here before. Carter leads by showing. May, who's up in a couple of batters, leads by telling. We went with Heat to strike him out. And this is what Trey did in the first game. He set you up with his curveball, and then he elevated his fastball multiple times in that first start, which he was so impressive. He had a couple of Beautiful sequences, breaking ball away, fastball up, and this is exactly what he did there. Here comes Corbin Cyphers. He swings and rolls one to third. We'll have a play at the plate. There's the throw, no slide. That's and an out. out at the plate. Gail McCarty just trying to run through it instead of sliding, and he is out at the plate. Another good play by Taylor at third. And you got to go on this too. It's off the end of the bat. It's a slow roller. He just got a bad break. Got to slide to the out. plate there. It's a scary situation to come in standing up. Yeah. That situation of going on contact every single time with one oh. out. Didn't get a great jump, but third baseman made a really nice play. Well, they had a bases loaded no out situation and got out of it in the first. They had second and third no outs and are one hitter away from getting out of it again. This is this is Grayson May, the center fielder. Thirtieth pitch in the second inning coming up. And his favorite player is Julio Rodriguez, who just got 17 hits in his last 22 at bats during one stretch, set a major league record for most hits ever in any four game stretch. Locked in and it comes at a time when the Mariners need to win. They're being pressured of course in the American League wild card by the Red Sox. So Julio shows up. Runner heads down to second. There will be no throw. They seem not to care too much about that. Well you got wheels on third. <laughs> Spell Weaver can run. Not even to mess with it. One and two. Can Kirchhoff do it again? Ball. Ooh, just missed with that one. Two and two. Now this is where he can be so deceptive. Fastball up, or does he throw that curveball again? Ball. Yeah. Oh, he looked like he swung oh, he it went. Went. That's Yes, all. he did. That'll do it. How about Trey Kirchhoff and how about his buddy there at third base, Brett Taylor? Again, they prevent a run from scoring. Second and third, no outs. Kirchhoff has three strikeouts now. 
And they are living dangerously. But after that swing, it is still 0-0. Zero, zero. Welcome back. Double-barreled action here. Right there at Lomity, we are full. You look down at Volunteer. Terrific game going on right now. We go to the sixth inning. One run game. Frazier and Monaco. This just happened. Strike or ball, we don't know. 3-2. In the air. Center field. Contreras to the wall. Gone! Curacao leads! <laughs> That's Todd Frazier, Mike Monaco, a huge home run in the sixth inning. He is still 12 years he old, is. Todd Frazier. I actually think he's regressing. I yeah. think he's nine. <laughs> <laughs> Great excitement over there. Again, these are all winners as far as game one goes. So Venezuela, if they lose, and they did get a man on with one down in the first, will sneak another peek. It's over on ESPN2 right now. The conclusion of that game. Back here, Tennessee and Washington. How's Washington doing? Walking a tightrope. Those are two amazing escapes by Trey Kirchhoff. Kirchhoff. And now Washington's got to think. <laughs> we got a chance to go ahead here at the bottom of the second. Stella Weaver on the mound. Seventh Play. winning. To pitch in the Little League World Series. Went one, two, and three in the first. And Larson Eng looks at strike one. It'll be Larson Eng, Nathan Ehrlichman, and Matthew Fisher. And he's the kid that loves baseball reference and looks yes. up stats all the time. We're going out to dinner tonight. <laughs> Waited on that. That's a fair ball off the glove of Jackson Tabor. First hit for Seattle, Washington. Definitely a fair ball. It's close, too, because he saw umpire called it foul and then changed, called it fair. Yeah, and I think they're going to find out that our first base umpire, Ed Moran Jr., may have just by mistake raised his hands and then he pointed fair. And it was a fair ball. Right. The, the foul signal is the hands go straight up. The fair signal is you just point, point. into fair territory. He did both. <laughs> he kind of implied foul ball with his hands. But I think in the spirit of the whole thing, nobody from Nolansville slowed down. And they're going to have a runner at first base in Larson Ang. That's all. Here's Nathan Ehrlichman. And that oh. one misses. All right, temperature check, Jules. Ravi, I am with Stella's mom, Rachel, dad, Matt, older brother, Henry. And Rachel, usually we do the parent check-in when, when your, your kid's on the mound. And it is stressful in itself, but this is a whole different level. Seventh female. Oh, off the glove of Tabor. One sec, Julie. You got runners at first and second. Go ahead. Seventh, seventh female to ever pitch in a Little League World Series game. How are you doing? You know, I'm doing pretty good. I mean, I, one of the unique things about it with her being a girl is I've been able to be with her. Um, so I get to see her at night and check in with her. And she seems to be handling it well. And um, it's just such an amazing experience to be able to see her do this at this level because she's always watched it and followed it and just to see her, you know, I, I honestly don't get that nervous when she's on the mound because she resets pretty well and she's, you know, she does her thing. So handling it pretty well is the understatement of the year. And Matt, to that point, I mean, there's been so much attention on her, as we know, all these interviews, all this media, and yet she said to me, actually, ah, I'm, I'm learning to enjoy it. No athlete has ever said that to me in an interview before. How did you get your, your daughter here? I would say, Julie, you're taking a lot up from her. You're asking a lot. Um, no, she's doing really well with it. I have to say, Randy has done a really good job getting her you know, ready for this. Um, it's something they've talked about, but then, you know, she's always been 
you know, kind of calm and within herself. So I'm not surprised. I'm glad that she is maintaining her poise throughout all this. It is fun. So we're having a blast. I'm glad, I'm glad this team is winning because we're having so much fun that to be here is the best. You roll deep as well with the Weaver family. There are a lot, Matt, on your side here. How many of the family are here? That's an excellent question. Oh. I knew Friday, Friday we were pushing somewhere around 70, 80. Um, because like I said I grew up in Western Pennsylvania, so when they found out, you know, there's a direct relation and they came in mass, so they didn't disappoint. Oh. Weaver fever alive and well. Henry, lastly, you were the older brother, Stella being the youngest of four. I know you've had a big influence on her baseball career. Tell me a little bit about that. Um, so we've always just played catch in the backyard. I've caught her bullpen, she's caught mine. So we've been through everything together, through her games, through my games. We just, we're together all the time and we have a great relationship together. I can't imagine how proud you must feel right now then. I couldn't be more proud of her right now because I've always wanted to do this, but to see her do something I couldn't because of COVID, it's just nice to see. Awesome, awesome. Congratulations on being here. All of you have a great week. Enjoy it. Thanks so much for the time. Uh, Julie, that's terrific. Thank you. Cypress is going to go out and talk to her for a second. Saw that ball go off the glove of Tabor at first base. He's five foot three inches. Lucas McCauley, who they brought in, is five foot seven. So they went with the four inches. Maybe they didn't want to see that happen again. I don't know. You don't see that very no. often, do you? Mid inning. This it's a reactionary. We got a three two, two on, nobody out situation. Ooh, good job by Matthew Fisher to stay alive. Inside and that one hit him. Ouch. Got him on the arm. He's a he's firing up that bench. The bases are loaded. So Rabbi, I've made the point a million times how these kids stand right on top of the plate. They're absolutely fearless. I talked to the Washington coach about this today, and he said, We tell them that little devil on your front shoulder, you gotta get him off. You can't be afraid. You're gonna go to first base. Okay? Hey. All right, you did great. You did great. We're gonna get you out of this. We're gonna get you out of this, and we're gonna go back and score a bunch of runs. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. Okay, give me some. I'm proud of you. Go get your first base in there. We'll take a timeout. Weaver out of the game. Bases loaded now for Seattle. Can Tennessee wig a lot of this one? You can see Volunteer Stadium, people beginning to file out after watching a phenomenal game with a sixth inning two run go ahead home run for Curacao. And they ended up hanging on and winning. Curacao stays in and now two wins away from getting back to the championship game. They were there last year. They brought five players back and needed a sixth inning two run home run to knock off Venezuela. What should be a great game tonight at 5-2, Japan and Chinese Taipei. They will then take on Curacao on Wednesday, the winner, to see who moves into the championship game. All right, Lucas McCauley, he's bounced around. He was at first base. Now he's on the mound. He was on the bench in this inning. We told you earlier in the game, one of the real strengths of Tennessee is their depth of pitching. They had all sorts of people lined up at any sign of trouble, and here we see it. And again, they're bringing the infield in. Nobody out first in the second inning. Bases loaded. Yeah, and they now have two right fielders and one guy playing left center. Oh. I and mean, the outfield shift is one you just don't ever see. If he hangs one and Taylor pulls one down the line, he could run for an hour. <laughs> It'll be an inside the park grand slam. <laughs> Never seen an outfield lineup this way. That's a jam shot there. Good velocity from McCauley. We've also seen all these swings go to right field in this yep. inning. I mean, everything's been foul balls to that side. Both hits went to that side. Tennessee picking up on tendencies as well from the Northwest. Right. Hit. Good pitch on the corner. Hey. There's the first out. Kid just comes from another <laughs> position, comes in, strikes out the first guy with a breaking ball away for strike three. It's pretty impressive. Here comes my guy, Ryland Jackson. Two hits in his first game. Ryland is five feet, weighs 92 pounds. 
Now that shifted outfield is in. Ball. It's a little high. Ball one. Look at center field, too. I mean, it's not just a huge gap in left, but I mean. Look how shallow the outfielders are playing. Yeah. He's looking out there at seven infielders. Ball. But that pitch is high, 2 and 0. Oh. And I just love how the shortstop and second baseman back up on any throw back to the pitcher just in case one gets away with the bases loaded. 2-0, this is a big pitch. Oh, now it's three balls, no strikes. Look at Cyphers, he yeah. just takes charge. Like, all right, I'm gonna go help my guy out. And the trust, too. You see the manager in the dugout just knows that his catcher understands his teammates. I mean, that's the best thing about playing behind the plate. Everything else that gets attention, but it's understanding your pitcher, calming him down in a situation like this. All right, 3-0. Look, I think we're taking all the way here. Calm down, breathe, calm down. Got a good defense behind you. Ball, ooh, missed down, ball four, one nothing, Washington on the walk from McCauley. First walk by a Tennessee pitcher in the Little League World Series. Amazing to think that Seattle leads this game, given the base runners that Tennessee has had in the first two innings. Brooke Shuey. Ball. Ball one. And for McCauley now, you've got to slow it down. Cypress is right. Don't let it start to spin out of control. Rush things. That's a good pitch. What a moment for the Shuey family. Dad is the manager, and here is Christian in a big spot, and that is a foul ball. Get Brooks, I should say. Holly not afraid to challenge these hitters in. And Dad is a dentist. He owns his own practice. He's the only dentist in the group, and he told me three weeks away where the Shut office is running things. On the ground, a short fielded beautifully by Carter. He comes home to get one, and that's now. it. And was there ever any doubt he was going to nope. make that play? Well, we know Nash Carter is going to be the shortstop for Vanderbilt for six <laughs> years. And there's just another reminder. Infield in. He makes the sure play. He knows he's not getting two on that ball with the infield in. He makes a perfect throw to the plate. And now they got a chance to get out of this. He's had three putouts at home already today. Look oh. out. That's a hit batter with the bases loaded. Shumway may have some pain. He also has an RBI, and Seattle has a 2-0 lead. So Fisher, who took the pain earlier, he has come in to score as well. That's the second run. Cyphers back out there trying to calm Lucas McCauley down. One of Seattle's extra hitters and one of their bigger players is Campbell Foster. The outfield is still fairly shallow. He's 5'10". That's a good pitch. Good fastball to get ahead. Think about all that emotion he just showed, too. The frustration, kneeling behind the rubber, and then come back, throw a strike. It's big. Yep, that's a good fastball. Foster was a little late on it. Throw it again. Up in the strike zone. See if he can catch up to it. He went down and just missed. Big Campbell Foster in a huge spot with the bases loaded in the second. Swings at it on the ground. That's off of Stella Weaver. She will not get back to first. And one run is in. Tough in between off for Stella at first base, went off her glove, and then there was no play. It's 3-0 Washington. So the, the teaching moment here is you cannot let that ball, if at all possible, bounce a second time, because then you get that tough hop. And she didn't get it on the first hop. Second hop, really hard to handle. And another run scores for Washington. 
Get us out of this. We're going to score some runs, okay? Hey, we're fine. You got to score to win anyway. Thank, Thank you. you. Here we go. Another pitching change, and because all of these pitchers are coming out short of 20, they'll be available again tomorrow if they lose. Welcome back. This is South Williamsport, and this is the Little League World Series. ESPN's coverage is presented by T-Mobile. Jessica Mendoza, Tim Kirch, and Carl Ravitch, Julie Foudy. Kevin Clark's got the big chair today. Doug Holmes continues to be an unbelievable director for us for years and years and years. Years. Pitching eligibility, you throw less than 20, you can come right back. <laughs> and years. <laughs> Doug actually was here directing the first game at Stotchfield. Tim said it was a long time ago. <laughs> if you lose today, you have to then win Tuesday, Wednesday, and Ball. Thursday, which would put pressure on any pitching staff at any level. Sam Santos against Grayson May, who's on the mound. And this one is up the middle. That's going to get through. It is Shuey. Shumway is held as the throw comes home. That's a clean RBI single for Santos. The number 12 hitter in the lineup makes it 4 0. The coach told us he loves hitting Santos down there because it gives him a little bit of power and a little bit of production at the bottom of the order. Jesse got a ball right in the middle of the plate. Well, and just look how he beats it. I mean, that's a big thing. He's not trying to max effort pull this thing. He just gets to it, pokes it up the middle. Biggest hit so far for Washington. Nolan Chang, the leadoff hitter. Ball. That one was behind him. Here comes the runner from third, Shumway. He's in. And it is unraveling for Nolensville. May's taking the blame for that, saying that's on me. Love Nolan Chang there. He didn't move, and he said, if it hits me, fine. I get an RBI and we score a run. Instead, it just missed him and went behind him, and they get a run anyway. All of this with two outs. Two runners on, Foster and Santos. That's in there from May for a strike. To repeat, this Tennessee team has a great defensive team, and there are a bunch of unearned runs in this inning. A couple of hit batters, some walks. That's on the quarter from May. Ravi Grayson May was here last year, like Nash Carter. How much is it? How much help is it that you're back for a second year? Certainly understand the way it all works been on the big field and played in front of the crowds. But if the competition is really good, that experience only takes you so far. Two and two. That strike three, and that'll do it. Nolan Chang is retired. May picks up the punch out. But wow, 11 come to the plate. They put up a crooked number five as we head to the third. Well, it's going to be Gideon Shepler to lead things off. He is the number 12 hitter in the order, and then we're back to the top for Carter, McCauley, and Blaylock. Fairly rare territory for this team from Nolansville, Tennessee. They did lose to Georgia in the regional, and then they later came back and beat him four zip before taking care of Florida, four to one to advance. But a five nothing hole as we start the third. That one to right field, that's going to be trouble. That is down and spinning away from Nolan Chang. Shepler to second, and he is held right there with the top of the order coming up. But a big start with a double. Tennessee has had the leadoff hitter on, Jess, in eight of the nine innings they've played in the World Series. Take a look at your 12 spot for Tennessee. And remember, they had 11 hits in their last game. That's the most here at the Little League World Series in any game. You can see why every single hitter finds a spot on the field. Leadoff double to bring up Nash Carter, Carter at the top. Nash Carter. Swings right back to the pitcher. Kirchhoff, he'll go to first, go into third. Scheffler, here's the throw. He's in, it gets by, and he's going to stay there. That's probably not the worst thing. That ball deflected right to Ryland Jackson, 
And he wasn't but a foot off a third base. Trey Kirchhoff did the right thing there. He had a chance to get the runner at second, going back to second. Instead, he said, let's get a sure out at first. We're up by five runs. He got the out, runner at third with one out. Right, let's go down to Julie. Jules? I am with uh, Trey's parents, Tanner and Christina. Tanner, let's start with you. Trey has just been phenomenal on the mound. Four innings in the first game, pitching well today as well. What is it about Trey that's been so good? What is, where does he get that from? Uh, you know, it's, it's good coaching, he, he, and he's staying composed most of the time. Uh, you know, I, I think he's been in some tough situations today, more so than uh, he has in previous games. But, you know, they're all well coached, so they know what to do. A nice second inning as well always helps. And, Christina, I know one of the talents that Trey talked about is he, he joked he's a daredevil and will pretty much jump off everything, which every parent with a 12-year-old boy maybe understands. <laughs> but tell me about that special talent. Uh, yeah, you know, it, it, his sister taught him at an early age to do some flips and things on the trampoline, and he's taken it to the next level, jumping off high dives. And, oh, uh, boy. He's even rode his, his uh, bike down a flight of stairs before. He's, he's a bit of a daredevil. <laughs> Ball. <laughs> down a flight of stairs. I don't hear that much that often. Uh, when, you, when you look at this team and the success they've had, what makes this group so special, Tanner? Uh, like, again, I think it's their composure and, and the coaching, you know, from a, e either side of the ball, where defense or offense, they, they they understand what the job is and they go out and perform and, and they do it. They execute. They execute indeed. A very clean team. Congratulations on making it here. Enjoy the tournament. Thank you. Yeah, congratulations on surviving a bike ride down a flight of stairs. <laughs> was it like three stairs or was it like an entire like 12 stairs? Who knows? Again, he can really do a standing backflip. So, by the way, can. Um, Tyler Glass now of the Rays mm. and Michael Lorenzen of the of now the Phillies, two major league pitchers that can do a backflip. Tyler Glass now is six foot eight and he can do a backflip. He's got to be the tallest man ever to do that. <laughs> they send McCauley down to first base on the intentional walk. And he is their two hitter, so now two on. Interesting for Turner Blaylock. The corner infielders are in on the grass for the three hitter who got hit by a pitch his last time up. See if McCauley takes off to go to second. Slow roller here. Second baseman's going to come in and get it. He'll flip. And no, it's right over the head of Fisher. One run is in. Down to second goes Blaylock to third. McCauley. Oh, they had it. And they blew it. It worked beautifully. Not sure what happened here, but Sam Santos, or they made the right play going to first base on this. Instead, it's the sure out at first, but a flip goes over his head. It's like Fisher didn't see it at first base. The flip wasn't that high. So the walk to McCauley now has him at third base. Blaylock's at second. And here is Ty McKenzie. Freeze on a line drive. Freeze up. on a line drive. Five to one. They're in at the corners, back in the middle. This is the right strategy with a four-run lead. Oh. Deep in left field. Time is called by Ty McKenzie. Ball. Oh. That one is down. Interesting. We had an intentional walk of the yeah. two-hitter to get to the three-hitter. Big Ty's father, of course, we talked about it earlier, is Ty McKenzie, NFL oh. fan. He's currently the outside linebacker coach for the Dolphins, who played right there for the Patriots, the Buccaneers, and the Vikings. So on fall break, Ty gets a chance to go down to see his dad coaching up those Dolphins. Two balls, no strikes. Two balls, one strike. Ethan Ehrlichman really framed that one out and got that ball and showed it to the umpire. Could have maybe stolen a strike there. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Perch off ready on a 2-1. On a ground to short. And right away they go to first. They pick the up up there. They got a chance for a double play. And they will get it. Good job by Fisher. 
as Ang threw across. Fisher went to third. They slapped the tag on Blaylock. Big time double play. It is five to two. Coming soon to theaters Friday, August 25th, it's The Hill, the inspirational true story about family, faith, and a baseball miracle. Dennis Quaid stars in The Hill, rated PG. And now we can check out the trailer. Yesterday, the Philadelphia Phillies all flooded Lomity Stadium and, and dove right into a great oh. It's his first pitch, ball one. Boy, those Phillies guys had a great time here yesterday. I asked Kyle Schwarber if he went down the hill. He said, no. He said, I don't think, think I could have been able to stop it the way that I'm built. <laughs> what, a, what a hilarious guy that guy is. We saw some emotion from Bryce Harper up in the booth talking about his kiddos, Brooklyn and... Fight. Brooklyn and crew, crew, yeah. Being here and just missing them. That was that was a cool moment too. One one. That's not Ball. gonna work. I was on the national bus yesterday coming from the airport to the ballpark and Dom Smith was in the back Strike. exchanging Instagram numbers with the kids from Australia. That's another foul ball. I love that you said numbers, that made me really happy. Do you uh, not, you don't, you don't I don't even know how to use Instagram. Did I, did I use the wrong term? Was, well, no, was no I like, wrong? If there's like that, you, you get your pages, you get your avatar, you find your name. So it's not a number, not it's, like it's a, a phone page. number or anything. You don't yeah. dial it. No. So it's like your Instagram. Oh, just so your a, Instagram. It's an Instagram page. Yeah, like if you were on Twitter or X, you don't have a phone number. I think it's we're pretty clear. Concept. I don't know anything about technology. We are very clear. Am I clear? <laughs> Crystal. Crystal. <laughs> oh, that's that's been a new addition this year, the slushy truck. Yep, three two popped up and out of play from Kirchhoff. Well, I'll quote our good friend Tito Francona again. Williamsport is where baseball meets the county fair, and you see it every single day in the concourse. It's tremendous. Beaten out of the ground, backing up beautifully. Carter, and he's there to make the play. This was a highlight for Stella Weaver. He's got a whole lot of them, but how about this moment? <laughs> Getting that, to be able to talk to Bryce Harper. That's a keepsake. Do you, do you have any autograph memorabilia from anybody? Oh, yeah. Do you? Yeah. Uh, my first was Fernando Valenzuela. Okay, I love that. Middle of Fernando Mania in the 80s when I was like five years old, and I can remember the moment, first autograph. It stays with you forever, and that's what these big leaguers understand. And honestly, <laughs> then what do you see Stella doing before the game? I mean, she was signing every autograph, yep. every little kid that came running over. Very reminiscent of 14 when Monet Davis was signing autographs. And I know she did interviews with Good Morning America. That was a Monet Davis thing. Ravi, is Monet Davis the biggest story in the history of Williamsport Little League World Series? Right. Debatable? My history. Yeah, well, I would say my history. Which is 20 plus years for sure. Remember, I mean, she was throwing no hitters, too. Cover Sports Illustrated, that's right. never happened to any other player. And with the media availability, there's never been a bigger story. Big Owen Luke behind 0-2. We've seen a change up and he goes oh. with the heat a little high. Now, having seen Monet Davis and that Taney Little League team in Bristol, I knew coming in there was something real unique, but you wouldn't be sure how it's gonna hold up at the World Series level. And it just held up, obviously, incredibly. Little League Museum Hall of Fame is amazing here. It's at the top of the hill, and that right there, as Jessica was pointing out, that's the Sports Illustrated cover of Monet. So cool. And just look, I mean, <laughs> muscle, game face. And I just love that Monet's still around, that she's still such a part of the game. You see Stella Weaver, her favorite role model is Monet. She actually works for the Dodgers now. Mm. Ball. Way inside to Larson Ang. He didn't move, and that ball was coming right at his hip. He's playing softball, too. College softball, mm -hmm. played at Hampton. 
Center field on a line, and it is caught out there. Good read, Jace Party. Looking smooth out there with the shades and the big glove. We're through three, still three to go in a 5-2 game for Washington. What's up, guys? This is Mike Stremski. Just want to say congratulations to the boys and Stella of Nolensville Little League. Congrats on making the Little League World Series from me and my family. Hope you guys take it home. Of course, Mike Yastrzemski, another one of the major leaguers that went to Vanderbilt, so he's shouting out Nolansville, and it will be Yaz and his Giants hosting the Atlanta Braves Sunday night, Oracle Park. Both the Giants and Braves very much in the National League playoff picture. 7 o'clock Eastern time, ESPN, Deportes, ESPN Radio will start at 6 Eastern with baseball tonight's Sunday night countdown. Michael Kay and A-Rod will have their K-Rod presentation on ESPN Two, Aaron Nola on the mound tonight for the Philadelphia Phillies against the San Francisco Giants. And that game will be played in Philadelphia. Ryan Henry is now going to take over behind home plate. He's the umpire Philip King who had been doing it for the first three innings. Dealing with the heat and it is brutally hot down there on the field. So smartly King checks out and the new home plate umpire will step in. I'm, I umpired a million games when I was a kid, and it is really hot when you get the gear on and you get the humidity. It's a tough day. Totally always concerned about all those volunteer umpires who are experienced umpires, but not necessarily is anyone experienced in dealing with temperatures down on the field, probably roughly 90 degrees, and the sun is beating down on them. So a new home plate umpire to get this thing going. You see the temperature 90, feeling like 96. New umpire, same pitcher, Trey Kirchhoff. And this one lifted to left field. Jackson going over towards the line. Very good play. One man down. Kirchhoff, 46 pitches, one out in the fourth inning. Not bad given how difficult those first two innings were. But five runners on base through the first two innings. Bases loaded, nobody out in the first. Leaning on his defense, too, pitching strikes. Winner of this game would be two wins away from the U.S. Championship. Strike one. He gets Jackson Tabor now. Kale McCarty after that. McCarty did double his first time up. Top of the fourth, sixth inning game. Boy, that one came right in on his fist. He swung over it. These are two very fundamentally sound, similar teams and that they don't generally make a lot of mistakes that hurt themselves. There was some pitching blips early in the game for Nolansville. That really, really hurt him. A couple of hit batters and a walk. There was an error. That's underneath the glove of the third baseman, Taylor. And Tabor is aboard at first. This is all strength. Raph, this is at his hands. I mean, he just literally muscles this one through the 5-6 hole, and the location of this one almost hits him. It just shows you how strong these hitters are from Tennessee. I think the manager was just checking to verify the pitch count, 49. So if they're thinking about taking him out, he can finish this batter and get over 50. Remember, we saw Ang warming up, and that may be something that they're considering doing. Christian Shuey and company in the Seattle dugout. First pitch, a little squibber, slow roller. They'll flip to second, and that will be the only out they get. That took a little while to get to Larson Ang, but it finally got there, and they get the force out. That may be the end for Kirchhoff on the mound. The crowd on the Seattle side stands up and cheers the effort of Trey Kirchhoff. And that was very impressive for him to get out of those first two innings like he did, keep his composure, and leaves with a 5-2 lead. We'll take a timeout. Kirchhoff is out. Larson Eng is in. Two down, runner on first in a three-run game. Washington on top. Up here enjoying ESPN's coverage of the Little League World Series presented by T-Mobile. 
And the excitement of the World Series can be downloaded in the new Little League World Series app. Fans can view schedules, watch highlights, and plan their experience using the official LLWS app. Download today for Apple and Android devices. He's got no problem, Tim, with the technology, that guy. In fact, he's probably creating technology on his phone right there. He is locked and loaded. Instagram numbers. Could be Graham, and it could be going game changer. I think it's pages, not numbers, isn't it? It's pages. I know some people have made that mistake before. Here's Larson Ang now on the mound. Stella Weaver up, and that's a hard one for oh. the shortstop. Beautiful. Santos across the diamond. And that was quick. One pitch. He moves over to short, gets a shot right at him, and Sam Santos delivers. Well, Santos is a really good second baseman, but occasionally they move him over to shortstop. This ball was hit like a bullet, and he gets the out of first. Against a very fast runner. Back here with Jess and Tim Kirch and Carl Ravitch. Yeah, the Northwest got five runs in the bottom of the second inning, aided by some hit batters, and they also hit the ball very effectively, and as a result, they got themselves a three-run lead as we take a look at our game track. It's brought to you by Geico. One for one with a double and a run from Jepler down at the bottom of the order. He is the number 12 hitter. It was a double, and it was big. Kirchhoff out of the game, but very, very good again, and able to come back in a couple of days. Loser of this one has to win the next three days in a row. So the challenge gets bigger and bigger. And that's why you're seeing both of these managers pay so much attention to how many pitches each pitcher has thrown. In Grayson May's case, he's at 21. Off speed, 22. So Ehrlichman looked at the umpire and asked for time, and the umpire did not request it. You can only request time. The umpire doesn't have to give it to you, and he didn't in that case. Off speed, backed up by a fastball. So Jess, yesterday we found out that Ehrlichman can do the Rubik's Cube in 20 seconds. Rabbi said he couldn't do it in 20 years. Have you ever done the Rubik's Cube? Yes. I, it, how how it, long does that take for you? Um, it took me five days. <laughs> <laughs> I stopped asleep. <laughs> Is there a secret to the Rubik's Cube? There's a whole patterning thing. My, my youngest son, he can do it. It takes him probably about 45 minutes. So the pattern is, is in the actual way you turn the cube. It doesn't really matter what the colors are or where they are, as long as you do the pattern. You understand exactly once, like there's, it's like counting cards. You understand the different col colors and where they end up. All right, there's a strikeout. I didn't even know, that, was the Rubik's Cube still a big thing? I'm not sure. I just know he can do it in 20 seconds and his record is 9.6 seconds. That, that's impossible. So do you think everybody that successfully does it gets to a place where the next X moves are the exact same moves? Oh yeah, they can see as they're turning it, they they know, it's almost like playing chess. You know what's coming next, and that's exactly, <laughs> you watch the mind go. That's why it's for like, like We're really on to immaculate people. grid things, right? Is the Rubik's Cube still a thing? Apparently. And these are the future right here. These kiddos. Is the Cabbage Patch Kid still a thing? Yeah. <laughs> Care Bears. Care Bears. I mean, shoot, the Barbie movie's the biggest thing around. Yeah, it is. You ever watch Get Smart, Jess? Did you ever watch Get Smart? No. No, you never watch Get Smart? Right, well, we have to finish this. Michael, our statistician, and I believe that Get Smart is the greatest television show of all time. Two never, people in the same never a in good, the same booth never, believe that. Never a good sentence to start out. Michael and, <laughs> and I, once you hear Nataro's name with Timmy. Yeah, you meld those two minds so you can go to some dark caves. <laughs> Very dark. Agent 99. Matthew Fisher, one and two pitch. Waited on that one and he fouled it off. He had a good swing at that. He just missed it by that much. All right, Jeff Passon has chimed in on the Rubik's Cube, and his answer is, it's all about algorithms. And then I believe he sent a video of somebody solving the Rubik's Cube. That's another strikeout. In June, uh, Max Park solved it in 3.13 seconds. Good for Max. Tonight, the NFL preseason on ESPN, the Ravens and the Commanders.
8 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN and ESPN Deportes. That is Tim Kirchen's team, the Commanders. <laughs> Joe Buck, Troy Aikman have the call. Lisa Stralt is on the field. John Perry answering any rules questions. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern time, special edition of Monday Night Countdown. You want to send a shout out to your uh, good friend, Scott Van Pelt, who's now going to host the pregame show, NFL Countdown, before the Monday Night Games. <laughs> In, in, in Baltimore I can't language. do the Baltimore E's. Only he can do oh. the long O in Baltimore. Oh. I, I'm not good enough. That's a strikeout and a quick pitch from May. Well, I'll say it. Congratulations, Scott. Enjoy the great season. Joe, Troy, have a great year. We are through four. Good game here. Washington, Tennessee. Three runs separate them. The Little League Baseball World Series on ESPN is presented by T-Mobile, America's largest and fastest 5G network. Yep, Matt, that's a familiar sight for many. The pregame opening pitch sent out by two members of the Savannah Bananas. Look at Stella Weaver getting there. Get it, girl. She could easily be a member of the Bananas with her skills. So those two are with Julie Foudy somewhere out there in center field. We, we took him out to, to center field. We got Swaggin' with us, and, you know, we like to play games off Swaggin'. We've got Jackson Olsen and Ryan Cox, both with the awesome Savannah Bananas. And we know they're, you guys are pro, you're pros. You're pros. But it felt like just playing games on the ground wasn't a big enough challenge. So I'm going to go towards the top of the tower, and we're going to launch some stuff and see how good you are. Okay, Ryan, you got you to gotta catch that in there. Jackson, you got to catch rings on the Viking head. Are you guys ready for this challenge? No, I get a little competitive, so let's keep up with me, please. <laughs> okay, here we go. Here we go. Dun 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 and get it. Oh, come on. Come on. And get it. Oh, <laughs> not even close. Come on. You're better than that, Jackson. I believe in you. Oh, Jackson. And you call yourself an athlete. Come on, man. One more. One more. Oh, okay. Let's see if Ryan's a little bit better. We're going to go basketballs. Ryan. Ryan, basketballs. Come on. Oh, that a boy. Oh, that a boy. Come on. Come on. Good job. Look at that. He, he wants okay. to head one in. Okay. All right, next one. Ready? Oh, Ooh, playing tricks. Okay. That should have been the header. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now she's just firing water balloons. Come on, get in here. Using as a shield. <laughs> Come on, boys, get up! Get up! Come on! Oh, oh shit. Get in there. Get in there. Get in there. Oh! By the way, in the game, two balls, two strikes, Carter Gamillion. Tim, the count, two and two. <laughs> Spoils that. <laughs> so, of course, that's a thing with Tim. When the count gets to two and two, he'll be walking down the street, airport, supermarket, in his own room, and he will lean to the right and hold up two fingers on each hand. Now, Todd Frazier does it every time the count is two and two. And Tim just told me that you had an experience over at Volunteer with what happened? <laughs> two different guys independently just came up to me and went, it's two and two. <laughs> and they leaned to the right when they did it. I blame Todd Frazier for this. Troubling. Three and two, swing and a miss. That's a big strikeout for Larson Eng. Remember, Larson Ang hasn't thrown since the semifinals of the regionals because of how dominant Trey Kershaw has been. Them always being in the winner's bracket, they were worried how are his nerves going to be on this stage. Not a problem there. Corbin Cyphers next up. Think about this. In 41 and a third innings during the Northeast Seattle Little League season, Larson on the mound struck out 77. And he walked two. He struck out 77 guys and walked two during the Northeast Seattle Little League season, the and regular he, season. He's not even their number one no. pitcher. Two balls and a strike. 
And what they love about him, Rav, is what you just hit on, just always around the strike zone. And when you are looking for someone to come in after your ace, usually it's to do this. Really good, two and two, and some frustrated body language from Corbin Cyphers. Well, since the States, Washington is 9-0 and with a plus 87 run differential. They won by almost 10 runs a game. That's outside. Matthew Fisher is out there in the bullpen warming up now. Grayson May on deck. Next one. That's strike three. Boy, look at Larson Ang feeling it. Now he'll occasionally kind of go into a little dance move if he hears some music. Not to show anybody up, it's because it's it's the rhythm. He just just feels like shaking on the mound. Also not afraid to get in your kitchen. Mm. That's exactly what he did. The Cypher's there coming inside. You don't see a lot of Little League pitchers confident to do that. Larson Ng definitely is. Breaking pitch and a good one. Back-to-back -back strikeouts to start. So he takes something off that little curveball on the first pitch and gets ahead. Big kid knows what he's doing. Another one may popped up shallow center field and right there is Kirchhoff. Seattle pitching really well. They only have three hits. They got a three run lead. Bottom five at the World Series is coming up. When you win, you get a chance to go out to that big bracket in the middle of the concourse between both of the fields here. And you can put Curacao up with a terrific six inning come from behind. We had a two run blast. Gives them a 2-1 victory. They are now a couple of wins away from an international championship. Curacao, Little Island, big dreams. And they certainly realized them right here in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Beautiful Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Japan, Chinese Taipei coming up at 5 over on ESPN about 25 minutes from now. And then we'll be back at 7 o'clock Eastern time with a showdown. For the kids from Texas and the kids from California, Needville, Texas, and El Segundo, California. Jackson Kalish is going to play in that game for California. Missed the first game. He will be batting third for California. There are the kids from Curacao trying to find some shade to chill out after another big victory. Some changes here. Nash Carter comes in from short. He's pitching. Lucas McCauley moves over to short. To have a great arm, it means you can throw from all angles, you can throw across your body, you can throw on the run. And Nash Carter can do all of those, but when he really sets to throw at shortstop, he throws straight over the top, just like he pitches here. He comes way inside. And he falls behind, leadoff man, three balls and a strike. That's better. It's beaten on the ground of the shortstop, and he charged it McCauley and then off the glove, and that's going to be an error on Lucas McCauley. The uh, team from Nolansville took a trip to a cabin during their state tournament, and they had bacon steaks. Is that steak with bacon on it? Um... Sounds like it. I'm thinking it's steak wrapped in bacon. Wrapped in bacon. Well, that's a win. Should we phone a friend? That's Kyle Peterson. If, yeah. If yeah. That's what that means. Kyle would know. We he had know, him at bacon. He knows everything about bacon. <laughs> he would take the steak out and just eat the bacon. <laughs> Why are we wasting steak? Let's just eat bacon. <laughs> On his Twitter bio, the first thing it says is, I love bacon. <laughs> the first thing. Yeah, it's, it's the truth. 0-2, and that one is fouled off. We all miss our buddy Kyle Peterson, who is a huge part of our coverage of Little League World Series. The best. Uh, he's watching everything. He's dropped his son Teddy off. We wish Teddy a big uh, good luck at college. He's starting that journey. One ball, two strikes on the off-speed pitch. Go back to the second inning when Larson Eng led things off with a single. And then Ehrlichman backed it up with a single. Then you have the hit batter, the walk, the fielder's choice, and another hit batter. And that's that's the inning in which this team from Washington scored five runs. That's all they've had. And they have only three hits. Haven't had a hit since the second inning. 
Man on due to an error here, 2-2, two, two, way outside, 3-2 and two to the backstop, and down to second base goes Jackson. A little uncharacteristic from this Nolansville team to see things like wild pitches, letting runners advance, hit batters. That five-run third second was completely out of character for them. Shuey on the ground, up the middle, and through! Jackson will be held at third base as the throw comes in and over the head of the catcher. Nobody's at home, and there's the run. And it is not Nolansville baseball. That's a single and an error. Jackson, who advanced on a wild pitch, comes in on a wild throw. Right, and the teaching moment here is runner was stopping at third on this. There was no reason to throw this ball home. It's got to be cut off but it was thrown too high to be cut off and went over the catcher's head and then there was nobody go, 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 go. at the plate vacated and allowed the run to score here's a good bunt carter looks to third fires to first they can't get him <laughs> that's, that's what happens stop. when you put a great shortstop on the mound he handled that perfectly well that feels like a big sixth run doesn't it in this game Absolutely. Well, you know the bats of Tennessee, they are there. They can definitely put up some runs, and so the fact that Seattle, Washington got another run here, they're not done yet. Campbell Foster reached on an error. Nolansville's infield is all in on the grass, trying to cut this run off at third. That's a huge swing and a miss. Remember Sam Santos? He's the last hitter in their order. He's up next, and he is one of their best hitters. Oof, off speed, couldn't connect. That's two really good slow curveballs from Nash Carter. By the way, what a perfect baseball name that is. Nash Carter, shortstop, Vanderbilt. That plays great. <laughs> you stop at the Vanderbilt? Look, he's from the area. <laughs> His favorite player is Dansby Swanson. He's a great shortstop. He's got Tim Corbin on speed now. Yep. Of course. That's yeah, the senior athletic director there. Oh, just let's stop it. All right. I'm not putting any pressure on. <laughs> trying to make a point. This kid is great. Few better than Coach Corbin in Vanderbilt baseball, that's for sure. One and two. That's tugged outside. Two and two. for Nash to settle it down, keep it at four if he can for this Tennessee team. Washington has been very opportunistic. That's outside. Count goes full, three and two, and Santos, a contact hitter on deck. This will be the 20th pitch for Nash Carter. It's a good one, it's a strikeout. These are two really, really good baseball players, two very good Little League players on the mound of the plate. Santos. Strike one. Santos is a terrific second baseman. I love watching him in infield, and he moves over to shortstop all the time. He's great at both positions. That's the call on the corner. Good one here. Now 0-2. Oh, Santos singled his first time up. Right back up the middle. He's got a nickname of Smooth because of the way he plays. And the 0-2. Fouls another one off. It would be really helpful to get an out here. We start the next inning 12-1-2. Still not used to saying stuff like I that. 12 1 2. <laughs> He's making Carter work. Now 1 and 2. Very confident at the plate. Also a big basketball player with Sam Santos, and he leads all the cheers and chants on the field. Trying to lead him to their seventh run. That's on the corner. Really good pitch. He didn't offer at it, but they get one.
It will be Gideon Scheffler hit his first time up and then the top of the order and they need four. This is ESPN's coverage of the Little League World Series. It's presented by T-Mobile. You can find Little League on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at the official handles at Little League. Follow the action, join the conversation with LLWS. Right before they come to the plate, they got an earful from their manager, Randy Huth. Eyes up, looking at me. Hey, this is where we have some fun. This is where we have some fun. We're gonna be remembered for what happens right now. Okay, we're going to be remembered for this. We're going to have one of the best comebacks in the history of Little League World Series right now. Okay, we got to trade places. That means I want doubles, and you trade places with them. Sorry. Everybody gets on base. Sorry. Every single one of you gets on base, whatever it takes. You hear me? Sir. Hey, it's our time. It's our time, boys and girls. Let's get in here. This ball lifted to shallow left, coming hard, and being there to make the play is Ryland Jackson. There's one man down as Gordon Shepler flies out to left. It's the 11th player to put the ball in play on the first pitch. That's yep. what Tennessee has done from pitch one. Aggressive, not changing that now. Remember, this is also the part of the lineup that scored. This is the two runs they scored back in the third. It was 12-1-2 coming up to the plate. Japan, Chinese Taipei on deck. Nash Carter now up. That ball misses from Ang. So say it again, Aang had 77 strikeouts and two walks. During the regular season of the Northeast Seattle Little League. Yep, 77 and two, unheard of. That ball slapped to third. Taylor's got some time. Nice play. They've been great defensively today. Bobbled that ball slightly and stayed with it, knowing that kid can run to first, but he didn't rush himself and he got the play. 38 and a half strikeouts for every right walk. That's, that's impossible. Corbin Burns doesn't do that. He doesn't walk anybody. He's been great today since he's come on. They haven't gotten a hit. He's got two strikeouts, and now he's an out away. Breaking pitch misses off to Lucas McCauley. You think he would get a save for this? He retires everyone he faced. The game on the line. Just foul. Mike Ntara, your best friend on Get Smart, said yes, he would get a save. He checked. <laughs> well, it's a joke. He's just trying to make a point if he makes tires all seven batters he faces to end the game. Jam shot there, one and two. Well, the Kirchhoff and Eng dynamite duo has got them a strike away from getting the day off and forced in Tennessee into the loser's bracket. Foul ball. McCauley will have another chance. They beat Maine 10 to nothing. They are on the doorstep of beating Tennessee 6 to 2. The 1 2. Good spoil there by Lucas. Lucas was originally in a lineup as an extra hitter, and of course, he's been on the mound. He's been at first base. Their number three hitter, Blaylock, hopes to get a chance to hit. One and two from Eng. Breaking pitch, driven left field, deep. Jackson back at the wall. That's a home run robber. He didn't have to jump, but he took away a homer from Lucas McCauley. And with it, Washington wins the game. That play kind of personifies his performance by Washington. Their defense was really good, and he tracked that ball perfectly. He knew exactly where that ball was. He never panicked, got to the wall, felt it with his back, and reached up to catch it. Got to love how they did this. And I just love that it began with Larson Ng in the beginning. First hit, first run to score, and then he closes it out on the mound against a ridiculously tough Nolensville, Tennessee team. How about Ryland Jackson going 225 feet away from home to the wall? 
sticking his glove up and making the catch that takes a home run away from Lucas McCauley and ends the game. Very impressive Seattle team now with back to back wins to start this. Their defense was tremendous today behind the pitchers, both Kirchhoff and Eng. And they should be celebrating, and their crowd all the way here in Pennsylvania from Seattle, Washington. The summer of baseball in Seattle for the All Star game, the Derby, the draft, now the Mariners, and how about the Little League team? Last 10 games, they're 10 and 0 with a plus 91 run differential. That's called domination. They only walked one batter. I mean, you think about that free passes, how you can get around, and that to me was huge from this patching staff from Kirchhoff to Eng. Well, both teams will meet again now. Nolansville becomes a little more difficult to get to a U.S. championship game. They have to win Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. One more look at the game ending catch from Ryland Jackson. I just love the read. I mean, he want to go back and this looked like for sure this is leaving the yard. Ryland Jackson finds the wall. He made this look easy. We've seen this ball drop in, drop out, go over the fence. Uh-uh, not for Northwest and Jackson with the great grab. Now all five foot, 92 pounds of Ryland Jackson robbing the homer. We'll hear from the stars of the game as we continue with the Little League World Series. Congratulations, Seattle. There's a big smile, man. Good job by them. Don't forget Japan and Chinese Taipei, but we have more to do at Lomity right after this.